Hello everybody, welcome to another exciting After Effects CS6 tutorial. My name is Buddy Blackford and today I'm going to go over introduction to text with you guys. I was going to go over something harder in it, this tutorial, but my phone rang earlier and I went to go pick it up and answer it, but I picked up a pack of Pop-Tarts and tried to answer that instead, so I decided to stick with something a, a bit easier today because I had to wake up really early and I must not be fully there with it. So hopefully this tutorial doesn't suck and we'll see. So I'm just gonna go over this uh, character panel here with you and we're gonna just figure out what everything means on it and then also this paragraph panel here. So to make sure that you have these open, come over to Window and make sure you have Character selected and paragraph. I don't know why mine's not checked, but it's over here anyway, so it's there. Now you can also set your workspace up here to uh, the text, which is basically what I already had. Um, but this is the uh, the text workspace, and I I use a lot of text in in my work, so it's good to know what's um, how to use your text properly and later on I'll go over some cool stuff with you and rules so you don't use your text and it looks like shit I guess I don't know if I'm allowed to say that but I did so uh oh so I'm just gonna grab this character panel and bring it right into the center and I'll zoom in on this for you with the uh, screen recording software and I'll just go over everything right now We'll see what's going on. So you've got your uh, font family right here. And it just has all the fonts that you have installed and the fonts that came with After Effects. If you uh, select your text here and click on the font family and press down or up or whatever, it will scroll through the different uh, families so you can see easily and that's always something that I like to have on a program I hate when you gotta click on it and and then find and then like you can't scroll through like your different families you would have to go here and check and it's just easier to use the up and down buttons now here we have the font style which uh, this type of text has or this this type of font has a bunch of different styles here so you got your bolds and then uh, light is the opposite of bold so regular is the normal and then you got your italics and everything like that so if you don't know what bold and italic and all that stuff is you need to take a computer class and that's probably like the first thing you'll learn over here we have the eyedropper tool and you can use that to select different colors pretty much on anything so if you roll over whatever and there's a color to it you can select that for your uh, font color um, right here we have the fill and stroke colors the fill is on the top here and you just click it and then you can use the color picker to pick or you can use this eyedropper to pick or you can manually or manually enter in these uh, colors here and here's here's the color code where you can enter that in or you can enter in the RGB values or HSB so I'm going to hit cancel because I want mine to be black. Now in the back here is the stroke color. If you click on it, it brings it to the front and then you can click on it to activate and then I can put a stroke around it and you can see that around the edge of the text there is a line and that is called the stroke and I made it red so you can see that. So I'm going to hit cancel. And then uh, this little button right here, if you click on it, if you put a stroke on, I'm going to do that real quick. And then you hit this button right here, it is no stroke color. So if you click on it, it'll put it back to nothing. Um, right here is the fast way to set things from black and white. So it's basically an eyedropper tool that you would put on black or white. So use that if you just need to go to those two colors real quick. Now right here is your font size. If you click on it, there are some basic font sizes, or you can type your own in, 
or you can scrub on the, the timeline or on the panel here to get different font sizes. Over underneath the uh, font size here is the uh, kerning. And what that is, is the space between two characters. So you uh, want to adjust that every once in a while to uh, uh, make sure that your letters are spaced correctly. And it's one of the rules of typography that you want to know how to use your kerning correctly. We have the leading here, which is I'll just show you the kerning real quick. I'll just scroll through. If you click on this uh, drop down menu, you get metrics, optical, and then a bunch of presets. Or you can manually move back and forth, and you can see there how that works. Now, this uh, section here is leading, and that's the space between your lines of text. So if I move this, that's how leading works. So there we got that there. And this section right here is tracking. And you can see how the tracking works. It brings it's it's almost like kerning. So you can almost use them kind of in the same kind of way. Now the second section here is uh, for the stroke. Now if I put a stroke on some of this text, let's not do red because that's annoying. Do purple or something like that. You can see that the stroke is kind of like barely visible. So you increase it at this section here. I gotta have it selected. That's why I wasn't doing it. There you go. Now you can do that. And then this is the stroke style. And there are different kind of styles going on here. So you got the fill over the top of the stroke, the stroke over the fill, and then all fills over strokes and all strokes over fills. The next section here has to do with like the size of your text and everything like that. So this uh, is the vertical scale. So if I do that, it's going to make my text go get taller. And this is the horizontal scale here. Makes your text wider. This section is the baseline shift. So if I wanted to like put a number up or a, a text up higher, I could do that. And this section here is for Asian writing. I think it's called Sume, but I'm not totally sure. But um, it's I'll show you what it does, but you don't have to worry about it if you're not using using Asian text. But here's what it does. It's kind of like kerning, but I never used Asian text before, so I don't use that section. And then we've got our uh, our fake bold here. I'll select these. Here's our fake bold, and then our fake italic. And most of the time, you want to use the uh, textiles here instead of using the uh, fake italic that it has, because they are made to look that way on purpose, and they look better because it fits the style of the text, uh, like individually it was made to be like that now your second or your third one here is all caps which you almost never want to use because it's not graphically pleasing and it feels like you're yelling at people we've got the uh, small caps here which might be okay if you have a like a regular if we go like this and you have a regular caps but use it sparingly also we've got the uh, superscript and subscript here which will show you that there you go and then subscript is below so that's everything on the character panel now let's head over here to the paragraph panel 
Actually, we'll do the paragraph panel in another tutorial because it's already about 10 minutes in on this one. So let's uh, continue on into a, another tutorial, and I'll see you guys at that one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.